it's a good sign when uh, you've got to kind of encourage the church to get back sitting down. I go to some churches and it says, yeah, everybody get up and move and chat. And nobody moves. Everyone's like, I hate everybody in this church. I just want to stay in my seat. That's good. But it's brilliant, isn't it? Really good. Good to see you. Good to see you. So my name is Mark. Um, for those of you who have not seen me, I'm uh, Scottish. Is there anyone else Scottish in the room? Is there? Oh, great. Yeah, good. We need to join together. Take the English on. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I'm married to Tamsin. And we've just had like a really like significant birthday that we had to, um, you know, when you, your wife's having a significant birthday, you've really got to get your act together. You've really got to put the effort in, yeah? Because you've got to make sure it's like one of those memories that are going to last forever. You can't just like get them flowers from the garage. Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah. And uh, so... The reason why I was kind of fearful is because when my wife was 30, when Tamsin was 30, I got her 30 special treats for her 30th birthday. That's pretty good, isn't it? In a lot of places, I say that, and the whole crowd go, ooh, here, nothing, yeah? <laughs> Just sit and get on with it. And uh, 30 special treats for her 30th birthday, yeah? She's always wanted to go in a hot air balloon. So number one, she went up in a hot air balloon. Number two, I let it come back down again, yeah? Because you've got to do that. You've got to do that or it's not a treat. And uh, I didn't know. Number five, she went to go to a hotel trip in Austria. We did that. Number 11, she's always wanted to go stock car racing. We went stock car racing. Wow, it's like, this is amazing. Number 18, money. Money was beginning to get a little bit tight, yeah? So I cleaned the shed. Yeah, that was number 18. Number 25, the money was totally gone. So I, like, wrote her name in jelly beans, yeah? And uh, that was... So 30 special treats. But all my friends were like, what have you done? What have you done? You've done that for our 30th. What are you going to do for our 40th? What are you going to do for our 50th? I'm like, oh, what have I done? And then I was like, no, 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 no. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine for, for her 80th birthday. I'm going to do 80 special treats, yeah? Number one, a bungee jump, yeah? And uh, that will take care of the other 79. <laughs> we won't need to worry about that. <laughs> I like when people laugh and feel like they shouldn't be laughing. They're like, oh, that's not funny. Um, <laughs> no, 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 it's all good. It's all good. Well, listen, um, I've absolutely loved being with you, and I just wanted to say to the guys here, they've looked after me really amazing. Thank you, guys. And um, they, re nah, they really have looked after me well, so I appreciate that. And... Uh, I did ask for a postcard, though, and I never got that. And uh, are you going to go and get it now? Don't, don't get it now. <laughs> wow. I have enjoyed our banter. And uh, I, um, I want to I wanna pray for you today. That's what I want to do. I want to pray for you as a church. I, I feel like I've got something burning inside me, and I want to pray over you and when you say can I pray for you um it's quite interesting because when I was on a train um I was chatting to a guy not a Christian I'm chatting away to him and this guy had a lot of challenges a lot of struggle in his life and I just said to him in the train it was quite a busy train I just said can I pray for you and uh, we were both standing at the end of this carriage and he was like Yes, and he fell down on his knees in the train, and he put his arms out like this, and he says, would you pray for me? And like the whole train are looking, and I was kind of like, mm, stand up. Uh, and uh, today, when I ask if I can pray for you, I'm hoping that you're not all going to 
crash down onto your knees, arms open wide. But I do feel like God is giving me something that I want to impart to you. And it's like, yes, that posture of yes. Um, I Everywhere I go, I love to hear stories. And people tell me their best story of what's happened in their church. And I like stuff that uh, really makes me laugh. And my friend was telling me recently that they had a situation where lots of people came to the front. And they were on their knees getting prayed for. And the preacher was praying for them. And what he did is he put his hand on this gentleman's head and was praying for him. And then when he lifted his head, hand up, the wig came up with his hand. And the wig was on the guy's hand. And he was praying. He prayed for everyone right along the road with this guy's wig stuck to his hand. Oh, that is, that is glorious, isn't it? It's like, oh, trying to get rid of the wig. And also just for that gentleman, just to be there praying, and then suddenly his hair is left. He's gone. It's like, wow, that is amazing. Is, is your hair real, Daniel, is it? Yeah, is it? Definitely real? 100%? Yeah. No, I know, because they would never make a wig like that. So the thing is... <laughs> they love it. They want it. No, they don't. Um, so I want to read from Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3 and um, verse like 16. And... Um, it's an incredible prayer for spiritual strength. And Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16, it says, According to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think according to the power at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Wow. Um, I want to pray, I want to pray that you would open up that you would open up to his flow of supernatural strength. I want to pray that you would open up to the flow of the power of God, that his supernatural strength would energize you, it would strengthen you, it would build you up. You see, I am so conscious in a room like this that lots of us are going from this place and you have got big weeks ahead. I know that there are some decision makers in the room and you're going to be making big decisions this week. I know that there is significant people with significant jobs in the room and you, my friend, have got a lot going on. You've got a lot of stress. You've got a lot of business. You've got a lot of stuff going on. In a room like this, we've got teachers, we've got all kinds of people working in, in um, all the different services, NHS, all the different kind of things that we've got going on, challenging jobs, people who are in business, who are working hard to keep their businesses going, people who are going to be traveling this week into a new season of their life, people that are going to be making big choices and doing a lot of stuff, and we can get really, really tired because there's a lot going on and there's a lot happening. And the prayer that Paul prays here is that your inner man may be strengthened, that your inner man may be energized, that, wow, 
out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you. That you would know this week that you can go through this week, wow, making decisions, lots going on, lots happening, busyness, trying to be a man of God, trying to be a, a father, trying to be a husband, trying to do all the stuff and still keep going. Being a woman of God, making big decisions, making choices, doing all the things you've got to do, that God's power would energize you, would strengthen you, that you would walk through this week with this new sense, wow, God, I am full of your power. I am full of your energy and your strength. Amen. It's like, wow. See, um, a little while ago, um, my friend Mike and my other friend Nigel and me, we decided to do the three peaks, which is the three highest mountains in Britain, in Scotland, England, and Wales. And we decided to do it in 24 hours. And, uh, oh man, it was tiring. And we made a big mistake because we decided between the three of us to drive between the mountains. Now, you're meant to get a driver, but we just thought, no, I'll be fine. We'll do it. And I've never been so tired. It was hard. And um, the, the middle mountain was the one in England, in the Lake District, Scarfell Pike. It's so brutal, and it's a difficult mountain to climb, and it's so hard. And in the mix of all of this, when you're like climbing and it's so hard and you can see all the mountain, you've still got to go ahead of you. We were absolutely shattered. We were wrecked. We were so tired. And we wanted to quit. We wanted to give in. But we had a little bit of a stop, a little bit of a fuel stop. And uh, we got some stuff in our rucksack. And, you know, there's nothing like you know, eating when you're really tired and hungry from climbing mountains. It just does not touch the sides, yeah? You just, oh, and we were just like, we'd got all this different food in our rucksack, and we were just wolfing it down, and we were absolutely eating it, and we were like, oh, one of the guys, we'd got, he got a tin of beans, big beans, and he ate the beans straight out the tin. Come on, that is gross, isn't it? It's like, ah, oh, just. <laughs> and then, uh, but you know, the incredible thing was this is that in that tough terrain, you know, we had that fuel stop. And then it didn't change what we had to face. The mountains were still really tough. But now, we had this inner strength. We had this renewed strength. The mountains didn't become easier. They didn't become smaller. We, suddenly, it wasn't like, all oh, the landscape is now completely different. It was still as tough and as hard and as challenged as it ever was. But now, we were fueled with this inner strength. And you know, I am not able to pray a prayer today where I do a magic wand and make all of your weeks so much easier and all your problems are going to be taken away and suddenly the preacher guy is going to come and he's going to say, wow, you know, boom, everything's sorted. But what I can pray is that everything that you're facing and you're challenging, that you would have the inner strength of the power of God, that you would have the Holy Spirit burning inside of you, that you would have a renewed energy in the name of the Lord, and you would be like, ah, I can face any mountain, I can face any trial, I can face any difficulty, because I have got the presence of God inside me. Amen. Come on. It's like, wow, God is with us. God is for us. You know, I've, I, I've known this for a long time about carrying the presence of God. It's something that's meant a lot to me. See, I became a Christian when I was 12, right? And I'm not one of those guys that like rebelled and turned away from it and backslid. And all. When I became a Christian at 12, I was full on on fire for God. 
And uh, I used to go to school and uh, I used to tell my mates about Jesus. I was like the guy that would always be there telling my friends about God. I was like this kid that like didn't care. And you know, everyone used to call me the Pope. That's what I used to get called at school, the Pope. And they say, what's Mark Ritchie's favorite drink? And they used to say, Popesy Cola. That's what they used to say. <laughs> and it used to hurt me. And now you've laughed at that. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> only kidding. And uh, I was that kid. And um, I remember, um, I remember my mom used to send me to school in a cagoule. I mean, I think my mom never wanted me to get married, yeah? And uh, she never wanted me to ever meet anyone, ever. So she used to send me to school with a cagoule. And I used to tie my cagoule up under my chain, yeah? And so I would go up to girls in the playground and go, hello, yeah? And they would be like, what is this? And I'd go, will you go out with me? And they'd go, I'd rather die. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it was a tough old time. And, uh, I used, to, I used to go to school, my little cocoon, I was there when I was 14. I remember it really well. I, uh, I was there at school and I got in and we were, I think it was like the art class. And when I got in, basically what happened was, is that the, 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 um, te the teacher, wow, was not in the class. Now, do you remember when you used to go to school and the teacher's not in the class? And it was chaos, wasn't it? And kids were going crazy. It was wild. It was bad. And uh, what happened is I went in, but I could sense, 14 years old, I could sense something was not, was not right. This is weird. And I saw and I could see that at the back, the lads of the class were playing with the Ouija board. And let me just say, can I just say to everyone today, do not mess with that. Do not mess with that ever as a joke, as a laugh, as a drinking game or anything, because it is evil and bad and wrong. And these lads were, were playing with it. And I could see that really quickly. And I remember like I went and I went and sat down and I took my, my cagoule off and I got my stuff out and I thought, well, I'm, I'm not going to engage with that at all. I'm just kind of sitting here. And after about three or four minutes, um, suddenly, one of the lads just came over and smacked me across the back of the head. And uh, I said, what's going on? And they said this. He says, oh, Richie. He says, before you came in this room, we were doing the whole thing and the glass was moving and it was all happening. And then you come in and you sat down. And since you've come in, nothing's happening. Nothing's moving. Nothing's going on. What is all that? What is all that? What is that? And he smacked me across the back. Then the teacher came in. And I remember going home. And my dad was a minister. And I remember saying to my dad, Dad, what, what is going on? I'm 14. I went into the room. You know, to, is it my cagoule? Has my cagoule got special powers? Is it the cagoule from the Lord? And he's like, maybe I should take that with me in places and just waft the cagoule around. And my dad was like, no. He goes, I'll tell you what it is, son. I'll tell you what it is. You are carrying the presence of God. You are carrying the glory and the honor and the beauty and the presence of God. And when you carry the presence of God, the enemy's got to flee. The enemy's got to disappear. And my prayer for you this week is going to be that you will be full of the power and the glory of God. That you will be full of the anointing of God. That you will go into situations where you're feeling stressed and tired and a bit beaten. And you're going to walk the glory and the honor and the goodness of God into that situation. You will know what it is to have victories. Hallelujah. See, I pray that out of his glorious riches, he will strengthen you. Maybe the mountain will not become less. Maybe the mountain will not become smaller. Maybe the challenges ahead for you this week are not going to be any different. But you will have an inner strength, an inner energy that comes from the Lord. That means that you will go into those situations and you will be victorious. Amen. My, uh, here Paul, his second prayer. He prays, you know, how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And I pray 
that you would be open to his superlative love. His superlative love. That his love would absolutely flow over you. That you would be open to the love of God. You see, let me say it like this. I come uh, from Musselburgh, just outside Edinburgh. And then my mom and dad moved up to the north of Scotland. And up there, there are some beautiful beaches. And these beaches are beautiful, big, white beaches with lovely sea rolling in. It is stunning scenery up there near Aberdeen. And uh, I used to go up there all the time, and I loved it. It's amazing. And then one time, I went up there, and there had been some young lads that had stolen a car, and they had driven the car all through the town, and they had driven it onto the beach, and the car was set on fire. And here we've got this beautiful white beach, stunning, glorious, looks so attractive. And then this horrendous scar on the beach, this ugly sight of this burnt out wreckage. It's disgusting and horrible. And uh, I want to say, you know, this is real talk, real time. There's some of us who are sitting here and we've got wreckage in our heart. We've got stuff that has happened. We've got mistakes that we regret deeply. Some of us are coming today and you might be keeping your head down and you might be trying to avoid the preacher's eye, but the truth is is that you've got stuff going on. That you've got some mess. All of us have messed up. All of us have done stuff that which we regret deeply. But you know, I want to tell you this incredibly beautiful and wonderful and powerful story. Is that, you know, the story of that beach is that one day they had a storm. And the waves came in. And the waves crashed over that beach. And you know, the waves, the power of the wave took all the wreckage off the beach and took all the, any sign of scar, any sign of any wreckage was taken off the beach and it was now just a beautiful white beach again. And that is the power of the wave. And I want to tell you that that is the power of the wave of God's forgiveness. That the love of God washes over our soul. And cleans us completely clear. That whatever you've done. Whatever any of us have done. Whatever mistake you have made. That you don't have to carry that through to next week. Because his beautiful, powerful, superlative love. Is that he has wiped you completely clean. That there is not even a scar there. There's not even like a sign that there has been wreckage there. It has been washed completely clear. Amen. My, uh, when my kids were young, we used to get them uh, toys that we would find hilarious. My son got one of those etcher sketches. Does anybody remember etcher sketches? And he would draw things on the etcher sketch. The worst nightmare of a dad is when your kid comes towards you and he's drawn something. And he's like, Daddy, that's for you. And you look at it, and you're thinking, what is that? I do not know what that is. And you look at it, and you go, oh, it's a giraffe. No! No, no, so what I mean, a rocket, it's a rocket. And then he'd be like, no, daddy, it's you. Oh, come on. Come on, I do not look like that. But you know, my son, little boy, having a go, trying his best. But the amazing thing about the etcher sketch is, it wipes everything completely clear. And here we are today, all of us, we're trying. We're giving it a go. We're doing our best, but we mess up. But the wonderful thing is, is that the beautiful power, the blood of Jesus, washing it completely clear. Amen. Completely clear. Beautiful. And 
I want to finish by telling you my third point. I pray that you would be open to his supreme power. Thank you. Thank you for coming up. When the keyboard player comes up in church and starts playing, that means, okay, okay. It's like we've heard enough now. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think we're all in agreement that yeah, it's time to finish. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I thought that was pretty bad until my wife has brought one for home. She's got a keyboard at home. She just starts to play. Okay, that's enough. Yeah, 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 yeah. We've heard enough from you now. No, you have been amazing all weekend. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. And I want to finish by saying this. Not only do we pray, hallelujah, open up to his flow of supernatural strength. Not only do we say, pray that you would open up to his superlative love. But you know, I want to finish by saying, I pray that you would be open up to his supreme power. His supreme power. God is awesome, glorious, and powerful. And he can do way more than we can ever dream or imagine. He can do way more than we can ever believe or think. It's all there for us. I love that it says, now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think according to the power at work within us. Oh, whatever you can dream, whatever you can imagine, he can do way beyond that. And he asks us to be open to his supreme power. I uh, got the chance about 10 years ago, I was running a, a ministry um, of evangelism, and I got a, the chance to go to a church in America to preach. And this church said to me, on the Monday, we want you to meet the mission board. And when you meet the mission board, we want you to put an ask in for something that you feel would help your ministry. And I was like, this is amazing. I went out there and it was a huge American church. It was wonderful and beautiful. There was about 3,000 in the church. It was amazing. And then on the Monday, I had the chance to go before the board and ask them for something to help my ministry. And I thought about it and really kind of put a lot of effort in. And I'd gone there and I, I was getting ready to go in and see them. And one of the staff just came past and he says, oh, how are you doing? I says, yeah, I'm just about to go in. And he goes, oh, what, you know, what are you thinking? I says, well, I've got this project back in the UK and, you know, I think it's, like it's going to cost about 250 pounds, which maybe was about $400. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to ask them if it's, could they give me $400? And this man looks at me, he says, Mark, you have no idea. Who you're dealing with? This is one of the biggest churches. I says, they are expecting you to come in with an absolutely massive ask. They're look, they're not, I mean, if you ask them for 200 pounds, they're going to be like, okay. They're going to write you a check for 200 pounds and they're going to look at each other going, what was that? What? You know, you're there. You're going into this big missions board. You're going to ask. Can, is it okay if I have 200 pounds? I promise to keep the receipts. Do you know what I'm saying? He says, you need to have a think. I went, uh, went downstairs, went for a quick wee, had a think, yeah. And I thought, what am I doing? I need to. And I went back up and there was this huge project that we had that we were trying to get off the ground and I needed 10,000 pounds. And I thought, okay, I'm going to go in. And I went in and I said, guys, I'm doing this big project. These unchurched people from these schools, it's going to cost about 10,000 pounds. And uh, I'd love for you to give me that 10,000 pounds. And I'm thinking they're going to come back and say, oh, we were thinking more like 200. <laughs> and they came and they prayed and they came back and said, we would absolutely love to give you this 10,000 pounds and we'd also love to give you this gift as well on the side to help you in your ministry. 
And I had that moment where I realized that the board I was talking to were far bigger and greater than I had ever imagined or dreamed. We come before God and we say stuff to God like, Oh God, I'd love it if you stopped my hiccups. And God's like, and I mean, he can sort your hiccups. But he wants to give you far bigger and greater than you have ever dreamed or imagined. He loves it when you come out with the most outlandish prayers and pray the big and great prayers. He does not look at you like you're stupid or think, well, why would you even think? He wants you to pray the audacious prayer. He wants you to pray the prayer that says, God, God, I'm believing for big and great things. God, I'm believing for incredible things. I have started to believe that in those pubs and theaters and clubs that I'm in, I'm starting to believe that, wow, oh God, do you know what? That there'll be a moment where, wow, in the pub, in the club, doing my event, and then suddenly, boom, the presence of God is going to fill the room and stop the room. It's going to be like, whoa, God is here. Amen. 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 Ask God for big and great things. Hallelujah. So we come before God today. Hallelujah. Maybe we could just bow our heads in prayer for a moment. And I just want to say that I don't know where you are in the room, but I feel like there's someone and you've done some stuff that you feel ashamed of, that you wish you'd never done, the wreckage on the beach. We're going to call on the wave of the forgiveness of God to come. And wipe, wipe your heart completely clean. Someone in the room that's like, Mark, I, I don't even know if I could tell you. I don't even know if I could tell you what it is. But it's bad. Then in the presence of God today, with every head bowed and every eye closed, I'm going to pray a little prayer and I'm going to say, if you prayed that prayer, I'm going to ask that you would put up your hand so that I can see it today and that the, the wave, the beautiful wave of God's love would wash over your heart and wipe you completely clear. The beautiful white sand, again, would be your heart, not an absolute sign of a scar. Hallelujah. This is the prayer. Why don't you pray it? Father God, thank you for your love. I am sorry. I am sorry for my mess. I am sorry for my wreckage. Would you come and wipe it clean? In Jesus' name. Amen. Every heads bowed for a moment I'm going to count to three and if you prayed that prayer I'm going to ask that you raise your hand one two three that's amazing that is incredible wonderful people all over the building thank you Lord for your goodness that you wipe us and wash us completely clean amen 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 well in a moment I'm going to hand back to Pastor Daniel, but before I do that, I have got a prayer inside of me that would pray that we would ask God for more than we've ever dreamed or imagined. I'm believing for wonderful things for this church. I am wanting us to have audacious and wild and crazy dreams for this church that God would take you into spheres of influence that you've never even imagined that you could be in. I'm believing for businessmen to get saved. I'm believing for whole housing estates to be impacted. I'm believing that the power of God will flow from this place. And I'm also going to pray that you would have a week where you would know that inner strength, that inner energy. Amen. 
So if you're with me and you'd love to receive this prayer, why don't you stand right now? And why don't you stand? And if you feel comfortable, why don't you raise up your hands towards heaven and in the presence of God and in the wonderful, beautiful sense of the glory and presence of God as we are in his glorious presence and we come before him right now and we say, oh God, we've got dreams. We've got beliefs, God. We want to be propelled forward. We want to move into new land. We want to take new ground. We want to go into new places. We want to go and take land that doesn't even belong to us, but we're putting our feet on it and we're proclaiming it in the name of Jesus. We want to come, Lord, and we want to walk the presence of God. And we pray in the name of Jesus. We come, God, and we ask you for big and glorious things. We come and we ask you for God more than we could dream or imagine. Hallelujah. And we pray right now for the power of the living God to come and to flow into our hands. The power of the living God to flow into our hands. That we would be energized by the Spirit of God to go and do that, that which you have asked us to do. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. God bless you.